While health leaders are advising against any travel, transportation companies sure could use the cash. Both ridership and revenue at New Jersey Transit continues to plummet. Rail riders are at roughly a quarter of the amount pre-coronavirus. Still, there is a silver lining if you look hard enough. The reduction in service and passengers has allowed the transit agency to complete projects, repairs, even those positive train control requirements. So what's ahead? Here with me now is the president and CEO of New Jersey Transit, Kevin Corbett. Kevin Corbett, great to see you. Thank you for taking a few minutes with us. You know, it wasn't long ago that federal regulators were actually targeting your agency as um, being, having the possibility of not meeting the positive train control deadline. Did the reduction in passengers in some way actually help the agency complete this deadline? Yes, yes it did, uh, Brianna. Uh, you know, when we came in two years ago, the project, no one thought we had a chance at all of making it. We'd only 12% done uh, and had just, you know, we have 300 plus miles uh, of track. It's at all the equipment, the computer systems, all that. So, uh, and I would say that we, we made some really tough decisions in 2018 that had an adverse impact on our our customers on the service end. It was a, a tough summer, but we uh, were able to get the installation done to make that 2018 deadline. The last few years, we've been doing tens of thousands of test runs on our trains and having that reduced uh, passenger service, we sort of made uh, lemonade out of lemons by being able to take the uh, reduction in service we had in the spring when the COVID uh, the epidemic really hit, pandemic hit, uh, allowing us to do more testing and uh, catch up on, uh, you know, uh, on our testing protocols. All that good stuff aside, we know revenue is down, ridership is down. Are you concerned at all about cuts uh, or, or layoffs even? I know that there were some rallies from union members uh, with the SEPTA line this week. Um, there's a lot of concern about more CARES Act funding coming or not uh, arriving. Uh, where are you at as far as looking at layoffs and cuts uh, in, the, in the next fiscal year? Well, I think we've been in the last few years, we really concentrated on right sizing the organization, getting our budget tight, doing, you know, we came out with our first ever five year capital plan, 10 year strategic plan. So financially, we have a, we have a new CFO. We're, we are in good shape through June uh, financially. Uh, we don't have debt that a lot of other public agencies have, you know, uh, you know, with their municipal bondholders, those kind of issues. Uh, so we're in relatively uh, good shape. And then what we are hearing uh, with the legislation that passed uh, yesterday is that with the second tranche of the CARES Act or whatever they're going to call the act, uh, funding that we should actually, that will help provide a cushion until ridership comes back. So uh, we're relatively speaking, we believe we're in good uh, shape. But if, you know, we have to manage the budget. If we don't have that, then we have to make uh, appropriate cuts. But we have enough lead time that we can do that in, in an orderly way if, if it's uh, as necessary. And, Layoffs is something we're trying to avert. Uh, you know, we have a good relationship with labor. We've worked like crazy the last few years to rebuild our rank of engineers, bus drivers, conductors. So it's the last thing we we would want to do. Are you still? Is the agency still then stable through the end of this fiscal year? So then until June, beyond that, are you even able to look beyond that at this point? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we are, and I think that's we are. You look at what scenarios depend on how much state. Uh, Eight. I think the new budget coming up, we have the indication from Treasury for next year's budget. We're starting the budget cycle now for, you know, the July one is our start of our fiscal year. So uh, we know what we're going to get from the state. Uh, that budget finalizes and we see the gap and uh, what we would have to do if we don't get, uh, you know, federal money. But right now it looks like that federal, from what we hear from uh, Senator Menendez's office and our other delegate members, it looks like we will be getting enough to uh, cover that gap uh, uh, for the till as ridership until ridership uh, resumes to normal. Kevin Corbett, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Oh, as always, Brianna, great to see you. Thanks.